Okay, welcome back. This is now 4.2, and what they're doing here is giving you some proof writing tips. I think the best way to learn proofs is, uh, you know, obviously what they're giving here is great stuff, but also just in general reading proofs. If you get a chance and, you know, this is something you want to invest in, um, read as many proofs as you can. Even if you don't understand it, you kind of will see their structure and, and uh, you'll pick up a thing or two along the way as well, okay? Okay, so anyways, this is 4.2 now in uh, uh, discrete math. And first what they're gonna do is give you some basic directions, okay? Just in case you have no idea what you're doing, they're gonna give you kind of a skeleton to follow. All right, in general, what a, a lot of professors will do is first write out the theorem. As a, a student, it's a little different than what you would do as a professor. So as a student, I would probably just skip theorems. Uh, I would just read the, the theorem and, and then skip the proofs. And that's what I generally do um, when I'm reading. Um, I'll, I'll go back and, and read them later so I get a better understanding. But in the beginning, I, I don't even bother with them. But uh, for a professor or somebody who's invested in doing a lot of proofs is a little bit different, okay? You need to be careful because if you leave out one little detail, it really can affect whether the proof is true or not. Um, one exercise for students in writing when they're, when they're learning proofs is to, to mess around with the initial assumptions, the, the assumptions of the theorem and see if you could still prove the thing to be true without particular assumptions. Okay. So anyways, um, once you write out the theorem, then you're gonna, um, of course, let the reader know that you're gonna do a proof. So you, you write out the word proof. Um, and you would underline it. I'm sure you've seen uh, teachers do this before. Hopefully, if, if not, you'll see it once you start calculus, right? Um, Thirdly, you want to make the proof self-contained. And the up book talks a little bit about um, with regards to computer programming. So in computer programming, you'll have these little code snippets, and inside the code snippet, you, you can have a local variable defined. Okay, you can also have global variables that exist outside of it. So you can have variables inside the proof, and then variables that are kind of outside the proof. What, what you don't want to do is start uh, putting all kinds of global variables into the proof that your reader is unaware of, right? So that's, I think that's what they mean by making it self-contained. You want to make sure within the proof you're declaring all your variables, okay? So uh, define or declare all your variables. And usually you would say let x be, so you use this word let, equal whatever, stuff like that, okay? Okay, um, for what are we looking at? Uh, write your proof using correct grammar. Oh, yeah. So um, when I, 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 I don't really grade a lot of proofs or do any proofs in my classes. Um, well, not a lot. I do some in like differential equations. And uh, one of the issues with students there is they'll just write out a bunch of numbers and basically just throw a bunch of symbols at a wall and expect me to kind of figure out, the put the bits and pieces together. But that's not what a proof is about. It's up to you to put everything together and make it so you so another person can read it, okay? Um, and I've, I've probably said this before, when I write a proof, initially what I do is kind of like a propositional logic argument. So I'll, I'll write out step one, step two, step three, here's point one, point two, point three, and I play around with it. And then at the end, I go back and write it all up in English. Okay, so, you know, in your end proof, you want to use English when you write it up, use sentences, use periods, all that stuff. Okay, okay. 
Um, step five, make sure you're listing all of your assumptions at the beginning. Okay, and proofs, um, there's, I, in my opinion, there's a lot of work to be done with proofs. It's, it's uh, for some people, they just, it's more of an art to them, but I think it's something that's programmable, you know. I think it's something that you can have it as well-defined and you always have to do this, 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 and this. So you can improve upon the theorems that you see your professors do. You can make them better. And one um, way I've thought of always uh, improving on proofs that I see my professors do is when I write out my theorems, I write out all of the kind of... Uh, additional theorems that I may be using in the uh, proof itself, okay? Because um, some of the theorems you haven't seen in a while, you forget what they are. So I'll write out a theorem, but I'll also write out everything else that I need to get that theorem done. And I think that's kind of what they're getting at with uh, point five. The, all these points are in the book. Um, but I mean, there's other, you know, the assumptions will be in the if part of your supposition. So it's always, you know, suppose uh, x and y are integers such that blah, blah, blah. That's that's the assumptions, okay? Don't leave that to the reader to be able to figure out. And it helps you uh, think through what you're doing. It helps you with structure and I don't know. Okay, so six, um, give reasons for each line in a proof. Uh, you know, within reason, if you, if you know that that you're talking you're talking maybe to one of your friends or something, you're not going to explain uh, silly things like uh, I don't know, like one plus uh, a plus b is equal to b plus a. You know, I I have to do that for my classes and stuff like that. But for student the student, you probably wouldn't even do that. And um, for faculty to faculty, like if I'm working with a colleague or something. A lot of times we will talk and we make we say a lot of mistakes, but we we know each other well enough that that we can kind of correct each other, okay? In in our own minds, it's like when somebody's talking to you and they're kind of trying to explain something to you and it's not a hundred percent. You can kind of piece it together in your own mind, and oftentimes your friends will say something wrong and you know what they meant to say, right? And that's kind of how it is between colleagues. And I, I think that's how it should be between you and, and your uh, colleagues as well. Um, if somebody says something to you that, that's clearly wrong, uh, in your own mind, you know, you'll say, okay, that's not right. And, but, but you don't have to say it out loud. You know, you don't have to be like, oh, wait a second. Um, anyways, if you want to avoid the, those kind of problems, you give a reason for every line in your proof. And sometimes in the beginning it helps, but on, on the other hand, it, it can bog you down. Like, do I need to prove that one plus one is actually equal to two? Like I would do an axiomatic set theory. You know, I have to go back and first prove uh, a, a, a correspondence between things. I, I don't know, you know. The, it's it's crazy, um, and I I've talked. Oh, I hurt my hand. Um, sorry. Uh, anyways, yeah. Give a reason for each line of the proof. Let's just move on. Uh, seven. Um, when one line follows from another, use uh, certain phrases. So you want to let the reader know that maybe two lines are connected. So um, just uh, when. Uh, statements are connected. Use uh, words like um, uh, since or because. So you have to think that some words are kind of restricted in use. You don't want to just throw them all over the place. Okay, therefore, um, if you're introducing a variable, uh, sorry, it, it, um, if it doesn't follow, then you're going to use words like note or observe.
Oh boy. Um, what else? Use separate lines for uh, equations and inequalities. So it's like when you're writing um, a term paper or a research paper, or something like that, and you uh, reference a paragraph from a book. You kind of indent and you 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 know write it in italics. That's how they want you to work with um, uh, equations. Okay, so use uh, indent indentation and separate lines for equations and inequalities. Okay. Okay. Um, what, what else now? What are some common mistakes and proofs? So this is like the second half of the section. Oh, let me go back up here. Okay, and if you ever uh, are a grader or something like that, this kind of stuff is really important to kind of get your brain and centered on. Oh, the first one is kind of generalizing from particular examples. So I always tell my students if I drove to work at 100 miles per hour today and I didn't get caught by the police, that means I'll never get caught by the police. Right? Uh, that's not true. Um, uh, another example that I see uh, students make all the time is something like this. 1 plus 0 squared is equal to um, 1 squared uh, which is equal to 1, right? And then 1 squared plus 0 squared is equal to uh, 1 plus 0, right? Which is also equal to 1. So in general, I can suppose thus um, a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, right? No, that's not true. Um, the problem is you have to FOIL. It's actually a squared plus uh, 2ab plus b squared, right? Those, those aren't necessarily always going to be the same unless a or b is, is 0. So um, don't do that, okay? So don't say just because it happens in this one case, that means it's always going to happen. That's bad news. Uh, all right. So another case, um, using the same variable when you actually mean to use a different variable. Okay, so um, suppose m and n are um, particular but arbitrarily chosen even integers. Um, by definition, we may write Uh, what? Um, m equals 2k and uh, then n equals 2k, right? No, you can't do that because what you're saying is that these guys for some particular k you can't do that because this would imply that both of these are the same, right? Um, you need to separate these out so they can be different difference and then you could go from there. So these use different variables. Okay. Um, so three, what else we got? Uh, okay, so I, I lump these uh, three to five all together and it's basically you're, you're jumping parts of the proof, jumping to conclusions. And I see this a lot with students that are, I hate, I hate to say it, but cheating. Um, so I'll be uh, grading their work and they just kind of jump over the most important steps um, and, and all of a sudden there's the answer, you know. Um, it is, usually they're, they're right, they, they get the steps, the parts and pieces are right, 
but there's no connection from one point to the next point. You know, they just sort of jump around and all of a sudden they get the answer. Um, and, and it's kind of a subtle thing. You can't come out and say, hey, you haven't really done the answer. You haven't done the work without kind of uh, having to do everything for them. So you basically end up having to do all the work and filling in all the gaps. And, and then they turn around and are kind of like, oh yeah, that's what I, I meant. I meant to put all that in there. You know, I just, I'm so far above you <laughs> that I don't need to, to show my work or something. I don't know what it is. And I'm sure there's some, I, I've been in, uh, I've had my own, you know, uh, situations where I, I just sort of jumped around in proofs. I, I get it. Um, I shouldn't have said that. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I see it when I grade and it's kind of hard to explain to a student, you know, that you didn't show your work is basically what I, I would say. But jumping to conclusions is, is really what it is. And um, in, in this context, it's leaving out, the, f the first one is kind of leaving out a good chunk of the proof. So leaving out the body of the proof. Um, the, the next one is, is basically just assuming the answer, you know, so you just blah, 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 therefore it's true. Um, and you don't really say anything. Assume the conclusion. And then the third part is uh, assuming something that's true that you really haven't shown to be true. Okay, so um, in general, when students do this, I guess, right, you're not showing all your work or something like that. Um, yeah, so make sure, but, but then sometimes, like, how much work do you want me to show you? You know, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a, not an easy business. That's why I wish computers could do this work instead, take it out of my hands, <laughs> you know. So six, uh, confusion between any and some. between the word any and some. And the book gives a pretty good example. Um, let m equal, so suppose m is an odd integer, and then by definition, um, we let m equal 2k plus 1 for some integer n. So imagine some student writes for any integer n. Well, that won't work, um, any integer k, excuse me. That's, that's not gonna work. Um, there's no way to put, to have a number like five and say that equals any integer over here k, right? We really mean for some integer k. Uh, what else? Avoid using the word if. Now this was my, my big sin um, as a proof writer. Ah. Okay, uh, because I used it a lot in propositional logic arguments. If this, then that. And in proofs, they don't want you to do it because it kind of, it's kind of like saying that this is not, um, maybe this isn't true, okay? Uh, when you really mean that it, it has followed from some definition above. It, so, so, I mean, if you don't understand that, just avoid it like the plague. Don't use it. Do some sort of work around. Use the word because instead, all right? So just avoid it like the plague and you sh you'll be a lot happier in life. If somebody had told me that when I was an undergrad, I wouldn't have suffered for three years in, the, in a graduate program, <laughs> you know? So uh, I t you heard it here first, folks. Um, all right, so hope that helps. Uh, with your proof writing and uh, 
the homework exercises aren't so bad. It's, it's mainly just here's a proof, identify the issue. So if you ever get a chance, become a grader. That was my first job out of college was grading. But all I did was grade calculus too. If you get a chance, become a grader for one of these proof classes. And then you'll become really good at doing proofs, like I became really good at doing integrals. Because literally all I was doing was, was uh, grading integrals all day long, right? Um, so you can imagine if you get a job grading proofs, all you'll be doing is grading proofs all day long, you get to be really good at it. And in my opinion, proofs are kind of the, the bread and butter of the advanced calculus or the advanced courses in mathematics. And a set theory, you need that too. They don't really teach that either. It's taught a little bit in this book, but I, I really feel if you're going on into mathematics, which I know some of you aren't, um, you need a class in set theory on top of everything else. But uh, I don't know. That's my opinion anyways. Uh, take it or leave it. And we'll see you next time. Okay.